Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, breaks through in 1994. Awaited uh, since its presentation in Cannes Festival, the Australian comedy by Stephen Elliott embarks, without knowing it at the time, a trio of drag queens to conquer the world. The main characters are three artists from Darlinghurst, Oxford Street, the heart of LGBT community in Sydney. The story begins with Tick. He performed on stage without great passion, tired of his environment and so hard, he hides behind his flamboyant character of Mitzi. His audience gets tired too and that's the trigger. Tick is the thread of the film. In fact, Priscilla is the story of his coming out to his son. You know what I am, don't you? Mum says you're the best in the business. Uh, well, your mother was always prone to exaggeration. Will you have a boyfriend when we get back to Sydney? Because, yes, Tick is the father of a young boy, he separated from his mother eight years ago before his coming out, and his unrealized paternity begins to weigh on his mind and his performances on stage. I'm sorry that I never told you. I'm not sorry that you're here. Mum, As with the other characters, the casting was difficult. Many actors refused the role before Hugo Weaving being cast. Steph and I were doing frauds, his first film, and, and he said, look, my next film is I, you know, three drag queens going out uh, in, into the desert. And I said, oh, I said, Steph, I'll do anything in it. Hugo came first because I had a good relationship with Hugo. Hugo trusted me and, you know, there was nothing as more wonderful as our first day of costume trials where we put Hugo in a dress in a hotel room in Melbourne and he just ran up and down the corridor screaming. And he was like a kid in a, in, in a toy shop and I just knew Hugo was fine. Tick's character was inspired by Richie Finger's life, who began his drag queen career in the late 70s, where he created his figures like Facile Facade, Bobby Mattel and Cindy Pastel, his now iconic name. Some people say to me, well, how come you're not working? And I say, well, I'm 64. <laughs> and you know, I'm no Brooke Shields, darling. You know, sometimes when I get my, I have to do Centrelink and I, they just don't get it. They just don't get it. And it's, sometimes I say, look, I'm a drag queen, you know, I'm not very bright. <laughs> well, you must, and, and uh, this girl that I got, well, you must be fairly bright if you make your own costumes and do your own, do your own. We, we, I said, have you ever seen me? <laughs> I said, I do a log lady. And she said, what's a log lady? I said, seen Twin Peaks? <laughs> and I just can't explain myself. And so, oh, well, you could go, you could learn some, um, you could do hairdressing, you can do, I don't want to, you know, it's like really full on. No, just won't leave me alone. Look, let me go. I'm a legend, right? Absolutely. That's what they call me, so that's what I am. Absolutely. A living legend. <laughs> With Tick on stage, here is Adam, a young gay man who did not know the militant years of the 70s, nor the roundels of the first Mardi Gras. He wants to be freely visible in himself and express what he is. To see. Fuck off you silly queer, I'm getting out of here A desert holiday, hip 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 hooray It's Adam who baptizes the bus Priscilla and paints it in pink Purple? It's not purple, it's lavender What do you think? Oh, it's nice, in a hideous sort of a way His crossing of Australia brings him out of his family environment and confronts him with the reality of a population not always ready to accept him. When Adam is in drag, he's Felicia, the most outgoing and tireless of the trio, always ready to push the limits and to tire his elders. One more push, I'm gonna smack his face so hard he'll have to stick his toothbrush up his ass to clean his teeth. 
Guy Pearce accepted the role. The young Aussie was known by the series Neighbours, and Priscilla has propelled his career internationally. We did a lot of research. We went to a lot of drag shows. We uh, got introduced to lots of drag queens. And one of the things that Stefan wanted to do was on the last day of rehearsal, we were going to do our camera tests and makeup and wardrobe tests. And the plan was that, that at the end of that day, we were all going to go out that night in Sydney to some clubs in full drag and just sort of cast us out into, into the world of the public, uh, which we did. And um, that really was a, you know eye-opening experience for everybody. Guy Pearce, with Hugo and Terence, was trained to go out in drag. They were even coached by the famous tranny trainer, Robin Lee. Pick up a glass, and he'd pick up a glass with his holding it like that. And I said, no. I said, this is how you do it. You pick you up. Just little things, and then I'd go like that with my hair. And he just used to sit there. Like, we'd be talking, but he'd just watch everything I did. And he said, it's very fascinating. Thank you. For you, the first time you saw yourself all done up in drag, what was your initial reaction? I just, that transformation well, I is incredible. I looked, I, I thought I looked like my mother. I saw my mother, you know, and my mother hated me saying that, you know, because in all these interviews I went, oh, my gosh, I can see my mother. And my mother's like, I don't look like a drag queen. <laughs> so, so that was quite funny. But I, it was amazing, you know, it, because it really was, I mean, I, 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 I've done lots of theatre growing up and one of the great, to me, one of the great attributes about sort of working in theatre is the ability with makeup to change yourself, yeah. to transform and to sort of, you know, to give yourself more of a, 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 a an energetic lift this way or something that's more yeah. dour this way or whatever it is you happen to be doing, you know. And, and with Priscilla, of course, it was, you know, the makeup is something that you're not even trying to hide. It is, yeah. it is on show. It is part of the show. It is part of who you are. The trio would not have existed without Bernadette. Terence Trump delivers a touching performance in the role of Bernadette. The press kit and the film mention a transsexual character, a term that is now since replaced by transgender. And indeed, Bernadette is one of the first credible trans characters offered by cinema. Bernadette is not really excited at the idea of this journey to the desert, but it is she who will benefit from the most beautiful surprise, love. And may I say it's been an honor to meet a gentleman. Believe me, Bob, these days gentlemen are an endangered species. Unlike bloody drag queens who just keep breathing like rabbits. <laughs> this character is a historical reminder of the transformist show Les Girls, renamed in Sydney since the late 60s to a large audience, including heterosexual. The inner city was a beacon for the refugees of the suburbs a flame that drew exotic creatures into the light. The girls had been bewitching audiences since the early 60s. A theatre restaurant with some unusual meat on the menu. Leading ladies like Carlotta would provide the model for my character in Priscilla, Bernadette. A trans woman named Carol Spencer was making a splash as Carlotta. Terence Stamp, who had already a nice career behind him, was little known to the general public. He had to face his fear to fully embrace this role. Me, What made Priscilla the Queen of the Desert unusual was that when I first read it, or when I first tried to read it, I found myself very weary and in need of a kind of nap. So I just thought, oh, I'll just have 40 winks and I'll read that when I'm, when I'm more awake. And the bottom line was, I never got around to reading it. So there was a woman who happened to be having come to have tea with me when my agent rang. And I was kind of telling my agent, oh, I just, you know, it's a one joke thing about guys wearing frocks and I don't really think it's the sort of thing I'm interested in. And this actress stopped me and she said, just say yes. I said, what? And my agent was, sorry, have you got somebody there? I said, what? She said, just say yes, just say yes. And I said, oh, um, well, why don't we uh, progress it and see what happens, you know? And 
And the agent said, oh, but darling, you know, it's in Australia. Uh, the guy's a first time director. And I said, well, and the girl, Caroline, was saying, just say yes, just say yes and hang up, you know. So I said, well, let's progress it. And I said, what are you talking about? You know, you're like, what are you talking about? This crazy thing in Australia. And she said, uh, your fear is out of all proportion to the possible consequences. And the only way you can ever really find out about it is if you just keep saying yes. And maybe it will go away. But if it doesn't go away, then you have to address the fear. And then she said this thing that really caught my attention. She said, this is not a career move. This is a growth move. Benedetto's role, even for an experienced actor, is a mirror crossing. I suppose in the back of my mind I was thinking, yeah, you know, if I play a woman, it would, it would be somebody that uh, would be devastatingly attractive, you know. So it was like a subconscious thing. And when they finished my makeup and I saw myself for the first time, I realized it was a tragedy, you know, this was, <laughs> this was somebody who shouldn't go out in the day, you know what I mean? And, uh... Darren Stamp won the 1994 Seattle Film Festival Award for Best Male Actor. And we also have Marion, Tick's almost ex-wife, who's bi or lesbian, who learned from our kid, because, you know, kids know everything. Do you know what your father does for a living? Yeah. So I suppose you know he doesn't really like girls then. Does he have a boyfriend at the moment? No. Neither does Mum. She used to have a girlfriend, but she got over her. And then we have Bob. He's a cis straight man. He's unexpected in the story. First, he's here to help Priscilla, who breaks down, and then by flirting with Bernadette, who falls in love with him. Can I come in? Now there's a gentleman. Of course you can, Bob. My Aunt Minnie in here? <laughs> Don't mean to barge in, just want to wish you luck. Thank you, Bob. Thanks. You can make up for what happened last time. Thank you. That's so thoughtful. All right, girls, let's get this show on the road. You out. That's a ten-minute curtain call. Good luck. Bill Hunter was a supporting actor, but you can't forget him, for example. The same year he was in P.J. Hogan's other excellent Australian comedy, Muriel's Wedding, in which he plays the role of Muriel's reactionary and corrupted father. If I couldn't type, why did they give me my secretarial diploma? Because I paid for it! Sits around the house like a dead weight, watching TV, sleeping all day, getting arrested at weddings. Another beautiful comedy on the long path of self-acceptance and fulfillment free from social injunctions. Priscilla then takes these three drag artists from Sydney across Australia, their destination, Alice Springs. They have to give a series of shows in a casino. What starts as a simple professional journey turns, like any other road movie, into an odyssey full of twists and turns, unexpected encounters, and personal developments. I've got an idea. Inspired by Albury, where Cindy Pestel performed, the film's starting point is a small cabaret bar in Sydney's gay district. Sydney was a gay bubble. It was King's Cross, moved to Oxford Street, and then subsequently to Newtown and Erskineville area. A gay bubble. But we didn't travel west of King Street. It wasn't the end of the world, but you could see it from there. Stephen Elliott was working on films by day and propping up the bar of the Albury Hotel by night. The Albury was the king of drag venues and the queen in residence was Cindy Pastel. A small gay community that functions as a family, which we sometimes want to run away from. The film's introductory song, I've Never Been To Me by Charlene,
is an invitation to an inner travel and a proclamation of personal fulfillment. The great strength of the film is that it is inspired by realities. The director decided to feed his film with his life and those of his relatives. With my first partner in a restaurant, two young 20-year-old boys on our own, and suddenly this voice says, well... What have we got here, eh? When I spun around and there was this kind of team of football players and obviously one of their mothers, who was a battle axe is the best way to describe her. And she started. Could I please have a stop? No! Oh. You can't have, you can't have nothing. We've got nothing here for people like you, nothing. The humiliation of sitting so far out of your comfort zone, so far away from Oxford Street, so far away from those bars, I didn't know whether that big ugly wall of suburbia had been put up to stop us from getting out or them from getting in. I think that moment of the humiliation of just being attacked by this woman and not being able to fight back, I've never felt so humiliated. It was precisely in 1994, with the Commonwealth Human Rights Bill, that all the federal states of Australia had to decriminalize homosexuality, whereas the previous year, Tasmania had precisely wanted to punish it. The film cannot ignore the hatred that was still very prevalent in the early 90s. The attack of Felicia while she goes out one night testifies to it. Okay, fellas, let's not forget how to treat a lady. You fucking freak! Oh. 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 Hold him down. Oh, no, please. Frank, stop! Stop! What the fuck do you think you're doing? You mean you do know this cocksucker? Get off him, you mongrel! Hey, he's joking, okay? Are you little little bugger alone? Get out of here, Bob. The tag on the bus was also very violent. The HIV was a deadly virus. The life expectancy of seropositive developing AIDS was not very long despite the availability of AZT treatments and its terrible side effects. Despite everything, Stephen Elliott does not sink into victimization or moralism. Dick's reaction is one of resilience. Good morning. Good morning. It's funny, you know. No matter how tough I think I'm getting, it still hurts. The film reconstructs a queer micro-society in the bus. Adam and Bernadette doesn't have to love each other, but they are always in solidarity because what unites them is stronger than what divides them. Come on. Don't let it drag you down. Let it toughen you up. I can only fight because I've learned to. Being a man one day and a woman the next is not an easy thing to do. The very strong challenge of Prasenna was to show that what was called transvestite was a real profession. It is no longer about just being a female impersonator, as uh, Charles Pierce used to be, for example, but about inventing and embodying creatures that go beyond gender codes. Drag is shown as an art performed by professionals. The final show embraces Australian culture as Australia will do for drag culture. The costumes for the films are incredible, winning the Australian Academy Cinema and Television Award in 94, BAFTA and Oscar in 95. Pride and dignity is precisely what the three characters gain in their journey. Mr. Belrose? Yes? Congratulations, it's a boy. The Adventures of Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, had a considerable impact on her release, both cinematic and societal. The film was so much a part of Australian culture that its iconography was shown at the opening ceremony of the Sydney Olympics six years later. Of course, some criticisms emerge against the distribution of our roles to straight actors, or the lack of beauty of Bernadette, or the uh, bodybuilded femininity of Adam. 
which would be just uh, stereotypes of who we are. But many other characters are stereotyped because in a comedy format, it is an ideal medium for humor. <laughs> and with humor, many positive messages come through, as it was the case for La Cache Fall, for example. Moreover, the film's dialogues are amazing anti-morosity and anti-hate weapons, allowing serious subjects to be approached without insight. Tony, Adam, this is Mr. and Mrs. Spencer. Hello. Hello. Shit. Oh, for goodness sakes, look at yourself, Mitz. How many times do I have to tell you green is not your color? Despite a modest budget and difficult production, the film was a resounding success. Casting Priscilla was a nightmare and Polygram had given us the money, had actually said, stick a name in it, any name. We don't care who it is, stick a name in and you got your money. Colin Firth, very, very close. Um, Rupert Everett was absolutely doing it and pulled out last minute. I mean, Tony Curtis, Tim Curry, I mean, you name it, we were after any star and we'd, we'd actually, we'd, we'd, we'd hit 300 no's. Casting of Hugo and Guy in that as well, you know, I mean, they were really interesting and boy, did that film create a lot of careers. It re-energised Terence's career. So you know, all of them and even the crew as well, everyone, that little, that little gem gave something to everyone. Even every crew member went on to do really amazing things. As soon as it was presented at a certain regard selection, in the presence of Cindy Pastel and other artists. Priscilla was awarded Best Film in Nalifon Seattle International Film Festival and won a GLAAD Media Award in '95. Carried by an original soundtrack with legendary pieces, he has marked by his joyful strength his audacity on the trance subject. One, two, go on now, go. Walk out the door. Just turn around now. You're not welcome anymore. In conclusion, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, is much more than a comedy. It is an ode to difference, friendship, and joy of life. 30 years after its release, the film has not lost none of its freshness and emotional power. It remains a queer classic, celebrated for its audacity, humor, and ability to reach a wide audience while remaining true to his message of acceptance and tolerance.